the trilogy concludes. Hey yo, I am Super Mario Sonic Lover. I'm Scrappy Fan 92. And welcome to the third and final game of the Spyro Insomniac trilogy with Spyro 3 Year of the Dragon. Uh, my personal favorite of the three games. And a playthrough that um, is actually uh, coming a lot sooner than I thought it would, be just because of the Reignite trilogy. Because this was originally going to be a lot later after Spyro 2, but. Activision says hurry up, so I guess we're doing this now. Um, so, yeah, we have uh, Scrappy along with us, uh, with me for this one as well. And, yeah, not much else to say, so let's just get right into it. Uh, what should we have as an icon? <laughs> uh, Hunter. Alright. That's something that's also brought back in Spyro 4 as well. <laughs> <laughs> we managed to capture the eggs, your highness. Every last one. Excellent. Maybe you will amount to something after all. Now, go guard the tunnel. Stop anyone from coming through! on the other side of the dragon world. We found some of the eggs, but they were too heavy to carry back. The other side of the world? The forgotten worlds. Spyro, you'll have to go. Nobody else can fit down the holes. Yeah, come on, let's go! <laughs> Bonk. Find the eggs and bring them back, Spyro. You're our only chance. You got it. And right away, uh, this game has already uh, made the stakes uh, make more sense than Ripto's Rage. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not asking for much. Uh, it's like. The eggs have been stolen, the, you need to save uh, Spyro's race, and that's virtually all you need, but this game does even more to, uh, it does even more past that to make the villains, or the villain I guess you could say, um, just that, just that much more that you want to stop them, because, uh, well we've, we've seen that, the sorceress, the sorceress's like big scheme is actually very, very di diabolical and kind of pretty dark, actually. 
Uh, but... Yeah. So, no one's gonna ask why there's just dragon eggs lying around in the unguarded here. <laughs> Yeah, we get a quite a few familiar faces from the second game. We got Zoe, Hunter, uh, a lot of the dragons uh, in the opening se seem to uh, look familiar from the first game. And we have one new character that becomes a mainstay, uh, which we'll get to hear more from in just a second. -er. There you go. Yep, those expertly guarded eggs, like the one you just picked up. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, yeah, but like, um, unlike Spyro 2, we have we have an actual incentive to uh, complete the game. Like, again, uh, this is this is Spyro's race we're talking about here, and like the game instantly was just like, ah, oh, I, I bet you can't, I bet you can't get everything, and oh. That was... <laughs> I guess your dogs don't like me uh, bad-mouthing Spyro too. <laughs> Yo, Spyro, I just found one of those portal thingamajigs that lead uh, to a different world. Yeah, That's like, in right. instantly the game is just like, oh, I bet you can't say get all the eggs and complete the game, and it's, it gives you just that little push to just be like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll, like, I'll, I'll show you that I can actually do it. It's like... I'm not necessarily asking for much when it comes to like even like especially like a collector from platformer, but just having I saw something just in that little stuff like that makes you want to keep playing the game, which cover. is missing from Spyro 2. Press the triangle button at the end of your glide. Oh, <laughs> that is actually a small enough jump that you can actually reach with just hovering. Or gliding, rather. That's fine. Oh, I almost forgot. I found this egg. Never change, Hunter. <laughs> yeah, like the first two games, there's uh, you have home worlds you can explore and um. Basically, same song and dance as uh, the other games. They're also um, pretty small, especially compared to the second game. Like, you can, like the second game's uh, oh, um, home worlds took quite a bit to finish, whereas this game they don't take that long at all. They're pretty self-contained, I guess. The... Hmm. I mean, they're pretty condensed. Yeah, they're pretty condensed. So they, they don't take that long to get through. So wait, you gotta collect all the stuff in the hub world before you go into the levels? Yeah, it, it's pretty... It, I I tend to do this with Spyro 1 as well, and uh, considering like the sizes aren't... I'd say are around the same as the Spyro 1 home worlds. Um, it's not too... not too different. And there's also a... Um, a benefit to getting all the gems here first because as you can see with this uh, there's a kangaroo in a cage and um, you can reduce a little bit of backtracking if you get all the gems here uh, save Sheila and like so then you can um, do her mission in the first in the first proper level so you don't have to go back to it later so that's what I'm gonna do um, and yeah yeah, she's just telling us about active mode. And see how quickly we can make Scrappy sick again. Oh. <laughs> and also head bash. I guess, um, 
for those who did to, for those who were paying attention, yeah. like Banjo Two, he Spyro kept most of his abilities that he learned from the prior game. Yeah, it actually also carries over to Enter the Dragonfly as well, um, and I I was wrong about uh, something actually because I've been actually watching a a Spyro Four playthrough, and um, you actually do need the uh, head bash for some like mini games. Um, but you know, uh, time, um, we'll play that game eventually. I, I, uh, uh, I think I, I think I need a break from Sparrow before I get into that. Especially considering what game it is. It's not a long game at least, so when, the, the pain won't take, won't be too long, but still. I, and watch, yeah. and watch Activision announce a remaster, so you have to play the original version quickly. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, if they do, if they do that, I don't think it would happen for at least another year or so, unless they want to rush the game out and make it. They and have give, to make it authentic. Yeah, give it the same fate. So I have to, so I have to suffer twice. <laughs> uh. There are, two, there, are, there are some things that I do legitimately like about Into the Dragonfly, but when you stack that up against all the things I don't like, it's... it's yeah, it's not good. <laughs> yeah, but well, there will be times as well about that later day. I don't want to get into that today. Uh, so how do you feel about the homeworlds in this game compared to the other two? Um, I appreciate that these are, I appreciate, I like their designs, but I appreciate that they, I don't know, what can I say? They're nice, and I like that they have eggs hidden. Yeah. So you got the, yeah, okay, we finished this. Yeah, I, I do like these home worlds. Um, they don't, they don't take too long to get everything in them. And the music's nice. Oh hi, money bags. Favorite character. Also, I believe he has a different voice in this. Yes, he does. Man, is she is she hated money packs in the second game? You you'll hate him here. <laughs> like even more. And here we have the start of a running gag as well. Uh, <laughs> I hope you appreciate this favor I'm doing in letting you out. That's good of you, mate. No hard feelings, eh? Right. After all, I'm just doing my job. Boom. Ah! <laughs> I'd probably rob him after that. <laughs> I reckon you'd be one of them dragons then. Yeah, my new base gets beaten up a lot. You dragons used to rule this entire world, you know. Then all of a sudden you left. Who? Dragons used to live here? Didn't you know? They say it was over a thousand years ago, I think. And they just left? Yeah. And the weird thing is, after they left, all the magic in the world just sort of went with them. I mean, they say this world used to have magic coming out the wazoo. Flying ships, singing forests, wishing stones, you name it. But when the dragons left, it all just dried up. Is that why some of the portals don't work? Yeah, they're starting to fade out too, one by one. Well, I gotta get back home and do some damage control. Come visit any time you like. Yeah, so there's uh, quite a, a lot more cuts, like general cutscenes in Spyro 2, but um, like uh, like um, dialogue cutscenes and stuff like that. But 
Um, at the cost of not having intro or outro cutscenes anymore like Sparrow 2, which is a little bit disappointing. Uh, but, uh, I don't... I'm not too upset about that, but just having... Uh, it's a little bit sad to have that little character go, I guess. Thanks again, Spyro. Now I have to my find personality out and all that. And this is actually a, um, a disc copy. Um, I'm not using, uh, like a PS, PSN version or anything because, um, there's actually... The original version of Spyro 3 is actually a, a bit... Buggy. Yeah, it, it can be a bit buggy compared to, um, uh, the Greatest Hits version for the US or the Platinum, the Platinum Hits version for PAL. Um, the Greatest Hits version is the, the best of the, of the three versions because, um, while the PAL fixes most of the main issues, um, of the original, like, Black Label one, uh, there are still think some things that, um, Greatest Hits does that the, um, pa uh, uh, Platinum one doesn't. Um, one of those being the third homeworld in the, in, in this version I'm playing doesn't have the proper music track it's supposed to have, and I think a third boss fight I think lost music as well. Yeah. And the final boss, oh my gosh. Yeah. But what, uh, I believe Platinum and, uh, Greatest Hits both, both fix, it, uh, a couple of issues with, um, like, being less buggy for starters, um, there's a there's like a huge bug in the speedways that we'll get uh, that I'll point out when we get to them. Um, there's a what's it? There's a cutscene that doesn't play in the Black Label version. Um, yeah, which we is, missed a cutscene as well. It's yeah, that important too. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I I think it's like supposed to be in the files, and you can't like. It's like accessible, but you can't. It, it just doesn't decide to play in game for some reason. So if you, I mean, at this point, uh, like if they if they don't include that stuff in Reignited, that that would be problematic. <laughs> they just uh, make it based on the original release. Ooh, Ooh. that's an NES knockback. Yeah, the, if I've ever seen it. Uh, I guess we should. Uh, well, before I talk about Sheila, um, is it? There, there, there's really no. If you want to get into Spar, you may as well wait for a reignited at this point. Um, so I, I, I would say if you were to get the original, play uh, Platinum Hits or Greatest Hits, depending on the region you're in. But if you have a PS4, you may as well. Or, or, already. It's coming to everything, pretty much, even like PC, I think, so you may as well just wait until Reignited if you can. But, yeah. Yeah, we, um, so, yeah, this, ga this game introduces us to, um, multiple playable characters, whereas Spyro 1 and 2 was just specifically Spyro-focused. Uh, this game introduces... I think five um, separate like playable characters, um, and each of them played slightly differently. And I think I think they generally ease you into different playstyles. Whereas Sheila's the most like Spyro, and when you get to the last world, um, it's the the most the furthest away from Spyro's like uh, general gameplay. I, I I would if if I was if I was like part of the um deci decision making in this game I would probably uh, move um the second and third um characters around because I feel like the third character you get um well let me rephrase that I f I feel like the second character you get is more removed from Sparrow's Sparrow's um gameplay than the um the third one is even though the third character has a really annoying mini game <laughs> uh. yeah that's 
Yeah, uh, Sheila, Sheila's fine as far as, like, extra characters go. Uh, doesn't, uh, play too much differently from Sparrow. Uh, you're still doing basically what you, what you've been doing with Sparrow in the other games. Yeah, you have a stomp just like Sparrow does, and she has, like, a really high double jump. But besides that, she's not too crazy. I like Sheila. She just, yeah. She's she got the job done. Yeah. And it eases you in, like. And she's there's not really any there aren't really many downsides of playing her aside from lack of flight. Yeah. And uh, it it also gives us m like a larger cast of characters. Because they, they, they all have a fun little uh, personality to them. And we, I don't, mo most of the Sparrow 2 cast are here and accounted for. Um, obviously with the exception of like Ripto and all that. But, um, you don't, you don't see, um, uh, who are their faces? Um, Alora or the Professor... It, with the exception of like one cutscene at the very end. Professor or... shows up. Hmm. He shows up in a level by himself. Oh, okay. Hmm. All right then. But uh, they they have less prevalence than um, the second game. If you ever forget how to control a character or vehicle, just go to the pause menu and select help. Thanks for the help. This egg I found in my house. So, um, we, we don't really get any explanation as to why, as what Zoe was doing in the Forgotten Worlds. Yeah, uh, I... I guess she was just, like, checking things out. Uh, I don't know. Kind of I, I, I don't know. Can fairies just travel freely between the realms? I guess. So. I mean, I mean, sorry, the fairies would be small enough to fit through the holes fine, so. It wouldn't be too out of the realm of possibility. Alright, we're done here. Did you get some extra dialogue if you went through the portal? Um, if I went through the portal, I'm not sure. But, um, I guess, we'll, um, since we're on, um, like, portals and levels and stuff, uh, if you remember, back in Spyro 2, uh, in order to get to the bosses, you had to beat, beat every level, um, which is still the case here. Um, you, you're gonna have to, a bit, basically what happens is that, um, at the end of every level, so, like some character is gonna go through the portal, and when you beat all the main levels, like not counting like sp like speedways and stuff, they'll all like be like, we've been able to activate or like finish this contraption that will send you to the next area, and then you end up fighting a boss and all that. So you know that the issue of like having to do everything is still here, and. It, I don't think it's as, it's as uh, bad um, for the for the for the main reason of the the backtracking is is nowhere near as offensive as the second game because when you do have to backtrack to um, previous levels the it's very easy to get back to go to get to where you need to be because the levels are kind of designed like a donut in the sense that. Um, you go, you go through the level, and then there's a passage that opens up that sends you back to the beginning, like you see with this gate here, and it makes it very easy to uh, just kind of loop around the stage. Um, for the most part, so, some levels are trickier to do that than others, but it's usually pretty easy to get where you need to go. And the um, when you need to backtrack to a previous level. Um, you don't generally have to redo anything for the most uh, you usually don't really have to do anything again 
because those areas are set to their own specific locations. So, and enemies are also set back to having gems when you kill them, so there's no spirit particles or anything like that. So, you don't have to worry about, like, a shady oasis or a, um, Fracture Hills si uh, situation. Trying to forget, Harry. Huh? Trying to forget. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, you mentioned we lost the... Uh, we did lose the pre-level cutscenes, so I guess we got lore in exchange for that. <laughs> yeah. There's more, there's more effort on the general, like, like, general story going on, and, like, there's a, there's quite a, quite a lot of character interactions, uh, with one, one interaction that is sorely missing, which is one thing that I'll give Rip to, um, like, as, as much as I liked the sorceress as a villain, and, like, what she's, what she does, um, as a, as a character, she's not as fun as Repto, and she doesn't have really any chemistry with Spyro to speak of. Like, she doesn't really interact with Spyro outside of fighting him in the boss fights, which is a little bit disappointing. That's like the one thing that the Sorceress is missing. Uh, yeah, the uh, baby dragons are cute. <laughs> Yeah, but like general, like just gameplay tweaks from the second game, like the charge being better to control is still pro is still prevalent here, and uh, I don't think there's really any changes to Spyro control wise. Uh, so if you liked how he played in Spyro 2, you'll like him here. And uh, I've uh, there's also the return of skill points, so. That's why he's burning all the trees. Yeah. That means your progress is saved. If you get into trouble, you'll return to the last place you got zapped. Yeah. I will be careful. You have to be a bit careful though, because if you act, if you enter a side area, um, stuff like all the trees and stuff will be reset. And I found that out the hard way. So, yeah, be careful about that. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Yeah, we should be should almost have all the trees burnt. Destroying the environment for fun. Yeah. You don't get an egg from that, it's just a little thing. Man, that chicken is dead. Yeah. Thank you for rescuing my town. As mayor, I award you with one of our famous giant chicken eggs. Oh gosh. Uh. Yeah. Very cute little animations. Some of them get repeated, but... <laughs> How dare you! Uh, this should be the... There should be another tree over here. Yep. Yay! And it actually tells you, like, it actually has, like, the thing pop up this time. Hi, Spyro. I found this gladiator training arena, and it makes a pretty cool skate park. Care for a test of your boarding skill? I bet you can't catch all 15 of the lizards running around here. Just come back if you want some boarding tips from the master. <laughs> All right. So yeah, the there's a lot of like uh, mini game pools and stuff, um, which, like I said, se uh, separate from the main levels. So they have their own set of like gems and stuff to collect. It can be a bit. Uh, it can be a um, 
a bit annoying as well as good. Like, like it has has the benefit of like making a backtrack, but backtracking better. But if you miss a gem in one of these areas, it can be kind of a nuisance to find it, because uh, sometimes there's like there's like there can be quite a lot of these sections in a level. So yeah, and I generally f I generally have have more tight uh like. With like having issues of like missing a gem and stuff like that, I generally have more of an issue with that in this game than the second game. Um, so you want to be as far as you can as as possible. Uh, you do get a treasure finder ability, but like unlike the second game, you have to unlock it, so you can't do that right away. So we'll have to hold off on that for quite a while. Yeah, but what do you, what do you think about like the mini games and stuff? Oops, they, they vary in quality. Yeah. <laughs> Even, yeah, that's a that's a non-answer, but it's all I got. Yeah. I'm not, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm admittedly not as fond of the skateboard as as most other people are, but. Hmm. I've already got that. Uh, this this the skateboard can it's be right. fun. Uh, it's all right. I yeah. had like as far as gimmicks go, I take this over the motorcycle and crash free. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd agree with that. Like, mm. certainly controls better. Yeah, and it feels more suitable with the level design given. Cause I I don't know how they expect you to. In the in the original version specifically, I don't expect how they ex how they like expect you to do Area 51 and get all the boxes and not just keep stopping every five seconds. Like how are you supposed to do that in a regular run? I've seen people do it online, but well, I know people can do it online, but oof. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know, I, I at least appreciate this is a nice, it's a starter area. Yeah. Because this, this game gets pretty, uh, pretty difficult with this mini games later on. So... And, uh... The skateboard in particular has uh, one of the hardest mini games in the game, like, uh, like... At the very end, pretty much. That... Consistently kicks my rear, no matter how like how much practice I get. So that'll be fun to see. Oi. But yeah, I think in general this, in terms of just general difficulty, this is quite a step up from Spyro 2 in general. I think. Um, I I still I still wouldn't say that Spyro the Spyro series is like anything too difficult, with the exception of some specific challenges. Um, especially in this game, but it's more like it. Sorry, keep going. No, I, I was just I was just gonna end by saying like if if you're if you persevere enough, uh, it's nothing too stressful. W with a couple exceptions, but we'll get to that. What are you gonna say? You're more likely, like a player is more likely to get. The players will like to run into a wall from the from from speedways or mini games than they are the actual platforming in this game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, not so much of speedways for this game because it's not next game, so I'm taking some criticisms to heart. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll get to that. Yeah. Uh. But yeah, you're more likely to. Like, the majority of your problems. That problem <laughs> challenge. Well, I cover the mini games and the platforming in this particular entry. Yeah, I think that I think the the, the platforming, the, the the regular Sparrow platforming is is the best in in this game, um, and it, it like brings in the best of Sparrows one and two. But like that has a good platforming and, and um, all that stuff, and it has. Uh, was it? 
Ah. Yeah. Okay, before I continue, yeah, you have to do the same thing again, but you can't wipe out, so... Uh, yeah, it's... It's not too hard for this, but uh, for this point in the game, it's a... It's a, a decent challenge. But... Oh, what was I saying? Uh, oh. uh, something about challenge and platforming. How Spyro 3 has, do you think, how you think is the best, like, best core Spyro platform of the, of the trilogy? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it has, I think it has the be the best general platforming of the trilogy. Um, like it has the best of Spyro's one and two. Where, um, as a general, like just pure platforming that you can do in Spyro 1 and like where you have to sometimes think outside the box to reach certain areas and it has like just the quality of life improvements that Spyro 2 has uh, the hovering the, be the better uh, charge um, and it and like Spyro 2 it has some mini games but it make it makes it puts them in like separate areas so again backtracking isn't as much of an issue, and I was way Ooh. too close. <laughs> Alright. And there's some up here. Yeah, I think I think one of my bigger problems with the skateboard is that turning in midair is just a feel a little too loose at points. Yeah. Yeah, the blue the blue like the blue ramps, uh is you is you hold the jump button as you're like about uh you're about to go off it. Um, the blue, the blue ramps will make you just go straight up and then straight down. And oh come on, this this, this guy is just trolling me. Uh, but yeah, you, you have to position yourself right, otherwise you'll just immediately wipe out. I'll get that guy later. And like the reddish, the reddish ones. Um, dang it. Oh. Yeah, I have to do it again. Oh, too bad. Maybe you'll do better this time. Yeah. Yeah, the, the red ones uh, send you in like an arc, I guess. 